Shops. Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Welcome to my shop. This is a cupboard I just completed. It is a linen cupboard to store woven fabrics that my wife makes in a kitchen we're making. And it will be totally buried in a place where an island meets an inside or wall mounted line of cupboards. So the only thing you will see is this face frame. So I thought about drawer construction. These drawers are 37 and 3 quarter inches deep and 21 inches wide. Four and a quarter inch inches high for the first four and somewhere around nine and a quarter for the bottom drawer. If I built this cabinet by conventional means using metal slides, for these five drawers, the five sets of slides this long, full extension, would be very expensive. So I decided to go back to traditional cabinet making, which I understand well. But I wanted to use plywood because it doesn't change in dimension, so I have none of the movement of a wood carcass in this cabinet. And I also wanted to use plywood for the drawers for the same reason. So I came up with a plan of only using solid cherry in the face frame, which I put together with six millimeter Festool dominoes. It's a loose mortise and tenon system that uses this machine to make the mortises. For the drawers themselves, a common way to use plywood in drawers is to use what's a drawer joint cutter. Uh, with that set up in a shaper or router table, you can run the sides of the drawer vertically like this and the fronts and backs horizontally like this. And that leaves you with the same setting with a what would be called a rabbited butt joint that fits together very well. So I use that for the back of the drawers, but the fronts of the drawers are made from plywood. And this is high quality cherry faced plywood, 108 bucks a sheet last time I bought a sheet. And I edge banded it. This is a piece that's got edge banding on three sides. There's your plywood cores there, but on the other three sides, it's edge banded. You always do the ends first, and then you have the tops and bottoms veneer overlap that. A few people would notice that that isn't solid wood. And to attach to these drawers, as I say, the drawer joint cutter would give me a lot of tear out here to be a bear to get those nice. So I decided, well, why not use dominoes for this? And so these are the smallest dominoes that uh, Festool makes for their machine. And uh, you can see that I've got three in this test. There's the groove for the bottom already plowed on a router table. And these just fit together like that, making a very strong drawer. The machine itself, you set it up for the thickness of the material, and then you simply put it against the piece and push forward, and a little cutter comes out, and that cutter oscillates. At the same time, it cuts the mortise. Let's talk for a few minutes about the slides and how I built them that support all of these drawers. And as you can see, they're very long drawers indeed. There are three parts to a conventional slide. There's the bearer, which I made out of white oak, and it is glued and air nailed to the carcass. In conventional construction, I would have to screw it to the carcass with elongated holes so that the carcass could move. But with plywood, that's not a problem, so they could be glued together. On each side of the cabinet, inside the face frame here, there are strips of wood called the guides, and they come even with a face frame, and they keep the drawer centered as it goes into the cabinet. And finally, underneath here, 
you can see them probably back in here. There's a piece air nailed and glued to the bearer that packs that down so that it comes just above the uh, face frame. And this allows you, it's called a kicker, it keeps the drawer from falling over and ruining the face frame right here. You can actually see the slides from the back of the cabinet a little better uh, and how they work. Uh, here we have the bearer right there, the uh, guide right here, and this is the kicker that keeps this from tipping down. And you can see these open effortlessly. They have been paraffin waxed. But I actually, with this method, I was able to build a sixteenth of taper into the drawer, which I do with conventional hand dovetail drawers. So this drawer is a sixteenth narrower at the back than at the front. And that gives you this very easy, like a piston and an engine. And as you can see, it moves side to side about one sixteenth. I allowed a tolerance of one thirty second per side all the way around. And as you get further out, that tolerance increases, you can see. And that gives you that nice closing ability. To facilitate drawer stops, I glued this piece of poplar to the back of each rail, which greatly strengthened it, stiffened it. But then I put two little 3 16 blocks of wood at each edge, and that is the drawer stop that that stops those drawers where they're supposed to. You should always try to stop drawers from the face frame and never from the back of the cabinet. Being a cabinet maker with a wood turning problem, I always try to put some turning in all of my furniture. And in this, I put hand turned shaker style knobs. I turn these as a Siamese pair like this and then cut them in two after I've turned all of these details. Then I put them in a chuck and I turn the other half and put the black dot in. This gives me a perfect grain match between the two knobs when I turn them around and put them in my cabinet. Further, I, a, a trademark of mine is to put a contrasting dot in all of my furniture poles. So these have all have dots in them. Additionally, the knobs increase 1 16th of an inch in diameter as you go down in the cabinet. And this corrects for perspective when you look down at the cabinet, makes them look much better. Also, the dots for the first two are quarter inch, but then they increase 1 32nd of an inch in diameter for each one as we go down. Yeah, I'm a little crazy. But who cares? It's fun.